Welcome to Electra Online. In this example here, we have to be a little bit more careful applying the theorem of Pappus Goldinus. What we have here is we have a semicircle made up of a wire construct. So we're not concerned about the area, we're simply concerned about the length of the wire here. And we're going to rotate that about the x-axis. So we end up with like a donut that's only half the shape. In other words, we only have the inner half of the donut, the outer half of the donut is missing. So you can see when you rotate that around, it looks kind of like this. It's all the way around like this, all the way around like that, and then it comes back in this direction. And I think you kind of see the structure of it. So if I go around like this, eh, that gives you kind of an idea what that would look like. And you can see that it is indeed a half donut, so to speak, with the other half missing. We want to know the surface area of that structure. How do we do that? Again, the concept is simple. It says that the surface area is equal to the length of the arc times the distance that the center mass of that arc travels as you go around the axis, and that travel path is a circle. The, the distance of a circle is 2 pi times the radius, and the radius would be the center of mass of the wire here. And the center mass of the wire relative to the center of the circle, this is a semicircle, from this point to this point, that center mass is equal to 2r divided by pi. But we don't want it in relationship to this distance, we want it in relationship to this distance. Now assuming that the distance from there to that point is 5 centimeters, and the radius of the semicircle is 2 centimeters, then to find y, and let me write that over here, to find the the y-coordinate of the center mass of this wire relative to the x-axis, we take the full distance, the 5 centimeters, and we subtract from that this distance right here. Let's call it y with a little squiggly line on top. That's the center mass of the semicircle relative to this line right here. So it's 5 centimeters minus this, and we realize that the center mass from the center of the circle to that point right here for a wire is equal to 2r divided by pi, so this becomes 5 centimeters minus 2r divided by pi, realizing that r is 2 centimeters. This then becomes 5 centimeters minus 4 centimeters divided by pi. And if we just drop out the centimeters for now until later, to make it a little cleaner, it's 5 minus 4 divided by pi, which then becomes the center mass relative to the x-axis. We're now ready to plug it into the equation. A is equal to the length of the semicircle, which is equal to half of 2 pi r, which means it's pi times r, r being the radius of the circle here, times 2 pi, and then times y, this, uh, the center mass, or the, x, the y coordinate of the center mass, which is equal to 5 minus 4 over pi. 5 minus 4 divided by pi. Now we have to be careful here. What area are we talking about? Does that include this surface here? And it does not include the surface. It only includes the area created by that portion. We have to do it again to find the area of this portion. We'll show in a moment how to do that. So let's call this y1. For the circular portion of the area, we'll have to find y2 for the flat portion of the area, which is not included in this right here or in the center mass. Remember that this center mass is only for the semicircular part of the wire, it is not for the flat portion of the wire. So we'll have to do that separately. Finishing this here, we get A1 is equal to pi times the radius, the radius of the semicircle, which is 2 times 2 pi times 5 minus 4 divided by pi. Simplifying this a little bit more, this gives us 4 pi squared times 5 minus 4 divided by pi. Now multiplying this through, this gives us 20 pi squared minus pi squared divided by pi is pi times 4 times 4, which is 16 times pi. And now we need a calculator. Pi squared times 20 minus 16 times pi equals, and we get 147 square centimeters. This is 147 centimeters squared, but that's only for the curved portion. We have to add to that to get the full surface area, area 2. Again, we find that by taking the length of the flat portion, 
times the distance traveled by the center of mass, and of course, the center mass of the flat portion is right there, which means that the y coordinate center mass of the flat portion would be the full five centimeters. Then we get L, the length, times the distance, two pi times the center, the y coordinate center mass. Plug in the numbers to make it simple or to show you how that works. L is the length, that would be twice the radius, two times the radius, times two pi, times five centimeters. The radius is two centimeters, that gives us four, times two pi, times five, that would be 8 times 5, that's 40 pi. 40 times pi equals, that's 126 square centimeters. And so thus to find the total area, area total, which is equal to area 1 plus area 2, which is equal to 147 centimeters squared, that would be for the, the curved portion plus 120 centimeters squared for the flat portion. So 147 plus 126, we get 273 centimeters squared for the total surface area of that, let's say, half donut. Like it's donut shape, but it has the outside is simply flattened instead of curved. And that would be the total surface area of that particular construct. And that's how we do that.